This is exercise 10-3, and we are working on direct labor variances. Sky Chefs Inc. prepares in-flight meals for a number of major airlines. One of the company's products is grilled salmon in dill sauce with baby new potatoes and spring vegetables. One of, during the most recent week, the company prepared 4,000 of these meals using 960 direct labor hours. The company paid these direct labor workers a total of $9,600 for this work, or $10 per hour. According to the standard cost card for this meal, it should require 0.25 direct labor hours at a cost of $9.75 per hour. What direct labor cost should have been incurred to prepare 4,000 meals? How does it differ from the actual? Break down the difference into labor rate variance and labor efficiency variance. All right. So, first thing we're going to do, step one. We need to figure out what we should have had given the information above. Number of meals prepared. And that was 4,000. Standard direct labor hours per meal. And this was given in the problem, and they said it takes 0.25 hours. So, we should have had total direct labor hours allowed, which is what our standard would be, 4,000 times 0.25, 1,000 hours. All right. And then our standard direct labor cost, labor hour, is nine dollars and seventy five cents. So we should have had total direct labor total standard direct labor cost equals the thousand times the nine seventy five. All right. Actual cost incurred And they said in the problem that they paid a total of $9,600 for this. And total standard cost we calculated that from above is then $9,750. So total direct labor variance And this is favorable. So we saved $150. Favorable. Now, in order to know whether this came from a price variance uh, or a labor rate variance or an efficiency variance, we must break that down further. Step two. Calculate labor rate and efficiency. Variance. All right. So, in order to calculate, oops, labor rate variance, we first will take actual hours and times that by actual rate. 960 hours times $10. Oops, that's an equal sign. This was given in the problem. That's how we got to this, right? Then we're going to take actual hours times standard rate. And that equals 960 hours. Those are our actual hours, but our standard rate is 900. $9.75 an hour. Okay. So, our rate variance, our labor rate variance, equals, so, we paid $240 more 
is unfavorable. Now let's calculate labor efficiency. And so we will take actual hours times standard rate which we just did a pop the 936 right and then we will take actual sorry, then we'll take standard hours times standard rate And the standard hours for that 1,000 hours on standard rate, which is uh, 9,750. So labor efficiency variance and this is favorable. So we were more efficient than we anticipated in our standard rate, but we paid more per hour than we calculated in our initial standard rate. And that is a direct labor variance. Now we're moving on to exercise 10 4, and this is a variable overhead variance. Logistics Solutions provides order full fulfillment services for dot com merchants. The company maintains warehouses that stock items carried by its dot-com clients. When a client receives an order from a customer, the order is forwarded to the Logistics Solutions, which pulls the item from storage, packs it, and ships it to the customer. The company uses a predetermined variable overhead rate based on direct labor hours. In the most recent month, 120,000 items were shipped to customers using 2,300 direct labor hours. The company incurred a total of 7,360 in variable overhead costs. According to the company's standards, 0 0.02 direct labor hours are required to fulfill an order for one item and a variable overhead rate of $3.25 per direct labor hour. Required, what variable overhead rate should have been occurred to fulfill 120,000 items? How much does this differ from actual overhead costs? And break that down into variable overhead rate variance and efficiency variance. Okay, so step one. We need to calculate what should have been our variable overhead rate. So number of item shifts is how we're measuring this. Okay. Right. And they shipped 120,000 items. And then the standard cost standard direct labor hour per item is 0 0.02. So total direct labor hours allowed using our standard we should have had 2,400 direct labor hours and the standard variable Variable overhead cost per hour is three dollars and twenty five cents. That was given in the problem as well. So our total variable standard variable overhead should be the twenty four hundred hours. Times is three dollars and twenty five cents. So that should be seventy eight hundred dollars. Now we need to calculate put down the actual variable overhead. And that was given in the problem of seven thousand three hundred and sixty. And then we have total standard variable. Off, and that's what we calculated above. Second side. So, total variable overhead variance. Data. 
actual minus the standard, and we have, and this is favorable, we saved $140. Okay. Now, step two, calculate labor rate, calculate overhead rate variance, and efficiency variance. So once we know what the actual variance was total, we then break it down into a rate variance and an efficiency variance. Overhead rate variance. This equals actual hours times actual rate. So we had 2,300 hours given in the problem, and our actual overhead rate is our 736 divided by 2300 hours. So we should come up with this number, which is our actual overhead. Okay. So I actually want to know how many hours. We're going to divide this by 2300. And this is our actual overhead rate per hour. All right. Now, now we need to take actual hours times standard rate. And standard rate. And our standard rate, we have 2,300 hours. Our standard rate is three dollars and twenty-five cents. All right, so our overhead rate variance equals actual minus standard, and this is favorable. Now, we're going to calculate overhead efficiency variance. We take actual times standard, which we just calculated up top, and then we take standard hours times standard rate. And standard hours and standard rate equals 7800. So to figure out our overhead efficiency rate, we take actual minus standard, and we come out with again a favorable. So we actually have favorable rate and favorable efficiency variance for an overall favorable variance for manufacturing overhead.